Hello and welcome to another tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, uh, someone asked me to go over more details about pathfinding, and that's what I'm going to do. So, I'm actually not going to go over the code. I will let you uh, either review my code that I made or make your own code. So, but this is basically just the algorithm or the idea. So, uh, right here in this display, let's. Uh, Let's pretend this green square is where you're starting, and this red square is where you want to end up. And the blue squares are walls, okay? And uh, the whole place is made up of a grid, like that. So uh, each of these squares are called nodes, and uh, the way the the path, what the pathfinding uh, should actually do is it should give you a final path of nodes to eventually lead you to your ending spot. So, uh, so it should maybe look something like that. That that could be a path, just an array of nodes. And these nodes can be represented by uh, you can store all these nodes in a 2D array, so it makes it pretty easy. So I'm just gonna go, go over some basic things. Okay. So there, there's two list and uh, list in this algorithm: an open list and a closed list. Uh, what the open list is is basically all the nodes it's currently checking, all the nodes it's currently uh, determining if that's uh, one step further towards the path that it'll actually get. And the closed list is it knows for sure that that is the best node. Uh, so that's pretty much it. So uh, the first step is we start with our green square, okay? And we have several options on the square. We can either go here, 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 right? So we can go in eight directions. Okay, so uh, knowing that, it it will add all these adjacent squares to the open list. So uh, let's select this color. This will be our open list color. So it it uh this will be our uh, starting our current node, and it will get all the squares or nodes adjacent to that uh, current node and add them to the open list. So uh, the blue will equal the open list. It's going to check each one and determine which one is a better candidate. Uh, to get closer to the square. Now there's two values that uh, determine this. An H value and a G value. And actually, technically one value, which is the F value. And the less the F value is, the higher priority that square gets. Basically, that means the better uh, that square is to getting to your destination. And there's many ways to calculate this uh, but I'm just going to use one of the more basic ways to calculate this so basically the G cost so that basically the end product for each of these squares is you should get a, something called an F cost and the one with the lowest F cost is that's what the program is going to choose and put in the closed list so uh, the F cost equals G plus H or the G cost plus the H cost and what those are is G, the G cost is uh, how much, how far you have to travel from the starting square, your current square, to one of the adjacent squares. So, well, there's only like two distances, either diagonal or just like uh, completely adjacent. So, uh, we can say like, okay, well, going here from the starting square diagonally will equal 14. 14 G cost, and uh, going here from the square right next to it is only 10. So this has a lower G cost than going diagonal. We could do that, or we can all make it the same. Up to you. So uh, the H cost. The H cost is basically the distance from uh, this square it's currently looking at to the destination. So one way. There's many ways to calculate this. One way is just to determine. Oops. Let's use a different color. Uh, determine 
how many blocks are horizontal and vertical to that square. So we could determine, okay, from this square, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So the h cost would be six. And you would add the h cost, which is six, or we could act, we actually multiply this by 10. So this would be 60 because uh, we're determining that every time you move it completely adjacent, that will equal 10 movement cost. So we could determine that uh, we could just multiply it by 10. So each block moving adjacent is 10. So it's 60 away, and I will have to move. Uh, so we just calculate this for all the squares. So for example, this would be 70, and this would be 80. So probably uh, just right now by looking at this, you can probably determine that this is the cl closest that ha this has the least amount or the, the least amount of h cost. Pretty obvious, right? So let's say and it and it uh, takes less to walk uh, there. So that that might be a good candidate. So uh, oops. So the program might choose that. So let's actually use yellow for the current square. So that's the current square now. Actually, uh, so what we would do is add this to the closed list. And uh, the closed list is pretty much we've looked through it and we've stepped on it. And that has become the current square. And uh, we, we're going to add some data to this square. We're going to calculate its G cost and H cost and F cost as well as a parent. And what I mean by a parent is the parent is basically the block you came from. So for example, this new square, this, this new node's parent would be this starting square. So it would point back. So uh, then it would add all the adjacent squares to the open list that are not already in the open list. So we would add these squares and would check again. And stuff like that. So. Uh, but since you see these squares that are already in the open list, uh, actually just a second. Okay, so uh, we're searching through, and again, this is probably the lowest f cost. So again, this program is going to add this, and uh, now it's going to add all the JSON squares to the open list. And you see these walls? It's just going to ignore those walls because they're not walkable. So they're not going to add those even, even uh, add those to the open list. So, uh, but this program notices that a couple squares, like uh, let's see, it gives a different color. Like these two squares, they were already in the previous open list. So, uh, it's going to do something special for them. So what we would do here in this special situation is calculate this G score in a special way. So what we're basically doing is determining if it's actually better to go to this square and then to this square rather than just going diagonal straight to that square. So what we do is start from the previous square or the parent square from this guy and calculate the G square from here and then from here. So 10 plus 10 is 20. So but going from the starting square just diagonally would be 14. So obviously 14 is less than 20, and we will determine that uh, it's better for this square just to go diagonally. So what we would do is we would add this to the closed list, and instead of adding uh, the previous square as the parent, we would add the previous previous square to the, as the parent. Uh, if that sounds confusing, I apologize, but that's basically what you do. Uh, I will leave a reference, a good reference uh, I found that I actually learned how to do the A star uh, in the description. So if you have any questions or troubles, just uh, go there and it probably will solve your problems. So now this square is the current square and it's actually pointing back to not this square, not that square, but this square. So, we're going to add all these squares adjacent, except for these, the walls, to the open list, and we're going to check again. So, uh, so this G, 
G us uh, sorry G scores 14 and it's H scores 1 2 3 4 and so that would be 40 so 40 plus 14 is 54 and this would be 10 but it would be 6 so this is the less least one so we would add that and then uh, add these to the open open list and it would continue so on it so it, it would look something like this and then we would add this his parent as this square so this would be pointing back to this this guy would be pointing back to this this guy would be pointing back to this square so it yeah it would it would go something like this and if you're cutting corners you, you would uh, yeah, go like that and you can change the algorithm so oops so the program can't cut the corners like this uh, it's a very fairly simple change I won't go over it now though so after a while uh, it should look like this and so basically wh when you want the algorithm to stop this is how you know when you want the algorithm to stop when it adds the target node to the closed list so so basically if it adds this red square red node to the closed list your pathfinding is done and the magic about this is remember how we set those parent squares parent nodes in each of the new nodes we added to the closed list well that's the key to the A star success so we actually backtrack and uh, so we start at the ending node and we say okay what's his parent oh it's this square okay I'll add that to my path list what's his parent oh it's this square I'll, oh I'll add that to my path list and we're gonna add it backwards so yeah so we ask who's his parent oh it's this node and it keeps going oh who, who's his parent oh this node and remember in this node we didn't add this node as its parent but this node so that that's why this will go here and just completely ignore that node it won't add this node to the path list it will add this node and then finally the beginning so your path would go back here like that 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 would be your path and you would add them add them like that and then reverse the list uh, or whatever you want, whatever works in your, in your code. I'm not going to tell you how to implement it, but that's that's basically uh, how the A star works. And uh, there's several other things you can do to make this faster. Of course, this is going to take a tremendous amount of processing time in your games. So if you're going to do this, either try to uh, master the algorithm or make it as fast as possible you, you can do this by either doing something like uh, a binary stack instead of list which will be in the link description uh, that link will show you how to do it if you if you're interested and also if you make the grid size bigger because it, there will be less amount of nodes to check through so uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you have any questions leave them in the comments below I uh, appreciate a rating, and see you in the next tutorial. Thank you. Bye.